In this demonstration, I want to uh, work on illustration board. It's quite a different surface. It's um, it's a cold press surface that I'm using, and uh, it's bonded to a backing core. I just put some very thin cadmium orange down there and adding a little bit of extremely thin cobalt blue. I just want basically a white sky, but with a little hint of color in it. The th main thing about illustration board is the the wash sits up because the paper, the surface paper is compressed fairly tightly and uh, you can just see the puddles sit up. It's dry paper, obviously, but um, the wash doesn't soak in anywhere near like it does on watercolor paper. So you have a little more time to kind of monkey with it and play with the puddles, but it does want to be a little splashy and sort of fresh and impulsive. The other thing you'll notice about illustration board, as, as the wash does soak in, it wants to curl a bit. That's just a bit more, a little, little stronger mixture of cobalt here. get the reflection in the water. I'll mix a little ultramarine in too as I get closer to the bottom of this wash just because it's easier to get it to go darker. You can see even on, on dry board, the wash just runs. Of course, I keep the board on a, on a little bit of an angle so that it's always working towards me. If you want backwash, you can tilt it. I'm going to guess with a bit of... Um, Burnt sienna, a bit of a fellow green, or you can use fellow blue. I, I would just want to sort of pre-establish some reflections with soft edges. So I'll put them in before I paint the actual trees and rocks. You can see in places where the wash has started to dry already. Now, here's the problem. It begins to curl. So the trick to that is to uh, turn it over and take the hair blower and uh, dry the back. Because the back, and, and I bend it a little to try and stretch the surface paper while I'm drying the core. Get it to shrink and it'll flatten out pretty good. Now, just a combination of uh, raw sienna, fallow blue, burnt sienna. There's colors to, to make sort of earthy greens. This is the lightest part of these trees. I'll be going over uh, with darker versions, but I keep just keep a good variety. Fallow blue, even on the shadow side throw those rocks and some of those trees into deep shadow. Ultramarine and burnt sienna for the rocks. Make sure you keep the rocks light on the top. That's about a number eight, number eight or ten. A lot of my brushes have the numbers worn off before I, before the tips wear down, so I don't always know. I don't always know what they are. Now, I don't use brushes this small as a rule, but I want to just pick and choose some spots where I'll, I'll have some 
finer detail. Just here and there, you know, not every tree and every branch, but and I can paint right over top with some silhouettes. That'll add a lot of depth to this group of trees on this little island. This one's about a double zero brush, which is very rare for me to get that fussy, but sometimes it's fun, you know, just to put some detail here and there. And one great thing about illustration board is it lifts off because of the rather compressed paper on the surface. It's very easy to lift colors. Some even some stains will lift out. This is um, cobalt, so it comes off pretty easily. But you can always get it to go to pure white. But you do need to just touch when you go over top of colors like this because it's because it's so easy to uh, lift. Sometimes just painting on it makes it want to lift and you don't want these colors to stir up too much. So you get the underneath color mixing with the new glaze, just just almost little impulsive brush strokes to touch it. And that puts the shadows in. So it's just a sketch, but it's uh, it, it should be helpful if you're curious about illustration board or whether or not you should uh, try it. It's always fun to experiment with these things.